So today I will talk about your statically indeterminate problem. Okay, so so far you have learned about stress and strain. So in this video I will talk about statically statically indeterminate. Okay, statically indeterminate problem on both tension as well as compression okay so uh, first let's draw a picture okay let's say uh, this is a column okay hollow steel column so in elevation it looks something like this one this is the steel and over this hollow steel section you have kept a rigid plate like this now you are applying a compressive load like this one okay this is the compressive load P so if you know the properties of this steel section let's say what is its length what is the cross-sectional area okay that is a and as well as what is the modulus of elasticity e definitely you can find out what is the stress acting on this steel column what is the stress okay so simply the stress is uh, we can say that external if we cut a section like this if you have watched my previous video you know that in this case we have to take a section like mn and if we take this above part as our free body diagram we can draw like this okay and the steel section is like this and the external load here is applied here so this is the external load p and here this is p and the internal reaction that is sigma is acting here let's say that is sigma still okay and this is also sigma still the total cross-sectional area is a so here the external load that is p is equals with your sigma s times its cross-sectional area there is no problem so this is a statically determinate problem SDP okay now let's say uh, as an engineer I am reinforcing this steel hollow column with some concrete okay so let's say this is the concrete agree so this is the concrete now definitely the stress in steel is not same like the previous one so now here along with your stress in steel you have to find out the stress in column 2 what is that so here you can say well simply the external load that is P is now is equals with let's say this is Sigma s okay uh, let's say it was dashed okay so sigma s time uh, cross-sectional area of steel let's say a s okay and now the cross-sectional area of your concrete is let's say a c okay so the force carried by concrete is sigma c times a c any problem with this equation no it's correct but the problem is the equation is 1 but the variable is 2 first one is the stress in steel is unknown as well as stress in concrete is unknown so you cannot determine the stresses so this is a statically indeterminate 
problem SIP this was statically determinate and now it has become statically indeterminate so it was a case about compression okay now look into a case about tension so consider this picture okay so let's say um, yes this is a support let's say and this is a hinge support now you have a member like this one okay so this is a member this is hinge support and you are applying a tensile load like this okay so it is not stable because this is a hinge support here so what you have to do you have to give an extra support to make this structure stable let's say we are uh, providing a rope like this okay so now this is a stable structure definitely okay let's say the distance of this rope is uh, well let's say this is a and the total length of this member is let's say this is l so if i now ask you what is the force in this rope what is the tensile force what is the force in this rope well definitely if you simply take a moment about this hinge and the total moment about this point let's say this is o is equal to 0 okay and now about this mo point the moment for this load is coming as p times l eh? and this is clockwise okay so this is positive and let's say here the tension is acting towards upward that is f and this is anti-clockwise like this so this is minus f times a this is equal to 0 and from here you can calculate the values of f as simply p times l divided by a so this is again a statically determinate problem now as a civil engineer I am deciding that I am not satisfied with this type of support system here okay I would like to insert a more roof like this okay is it visible well I think it's not that much visible uh, let's select this color I think now it is visible okay the lengths are same but the distance from this point to this new row is now B okay so now if I ask you what is the forces or tensile forces in row 1 let's say this is F1 and in row 2 let's say this is F2 well again you can take the moment about point O so if you take moment about this point O the moment becomes 0 now this term remains same that is moment due to load P is P times L moment due to F1 is minus F1 times A and moment due to F2 is minus F2 times B so this is the equation static equilibrium equation but the problem is again here you can see this is only a single equation but you have two unknown first unknown is f1 second one is f2 so to solve this problem again you need another equation okay so this is again a statically indeterminate 
problem okay so by now i think you have a concept of indeterminacy what do you mean by indeterminate simply this structure cannot be determined that is the meaning of indeterminate and why it becomes indeterminate because the required let's say consider this one okay in this system to make it stable a single row was sufficient and at the time it was statically determinate but when we insert another one or another constraint it becomes statically indeterminate so this extra constraint this extra constraint which is also known as redundant okay so this is the technical term when there is a redundant or extra constraint the structure become statically indeterminate consider this example here initially it was sufficient if we had only the steel column it was sufficient geometrically it was stable it could cater this compressive load okay there was no problem but as soon as we insert this concrete there is an extra constraint and this extra constraint is known as redundant and due to this redundant we have statically indeterminacy clear so how to solve this statically indeterminate problem so to solve this problem this two equation definitely we need some extra equation at least one extra equation because our unknown is two and equation also need to be at least two okay so what is the extra additional equation so simply that extra equation is like this let's say this one when you are applying this tensile load p it cannot move arbitrarily also this one cannot move arbitrarily let's say uh, this first row this first row extended or stretched this much and the second row stretched only this much so what will be the effect so definitely if we draw this bar it is looks something like this okay it is not possible here is the applied load p there is no continuity you can see so what is the actual configuration the actual configuration should be like this after application of the tensile load okay i am removing the dimension for right now okay after application of the load it will deflect like this okay so this is the tip and it will deflect like this so definitely the first row has moved this much amount let's say this is uh, delta 1 and the second row has moved this much amount this is delta 2 okay now what is common here if we draw the center line of the member here you can see the angle if it is angle theta the theta is equals with uh, in first case this is delta 2 by b and in second case it is uh, it is coming as delta 1 by a okay but in both cases this is theta so these two terms are equals okay and in this equation we can say that delta 1 
is equals with a times delta 2 by b okay now if the force in first row is f1 we can rewrite delta as uh, what was our equation for deflection i am writing it here this was p times l divided by a e we have derived this equation in the last section last video okay so now delta 1 can be written as this is delta 1 is written as f1 times l divided by a times e okay and delta 2 can be written as this one f2 times l divided by a e okay and you know that the delta 1 is equal to this one so we can rewrite again f1 times l divided by a e is equals with a times delta 2 that is f2 l by a e by b okay so lengths are same cross sections are same modulus of elasticity also same so f1 is nothing but a by b times f2 clear so now you can replace here f1 with your this one that is a by b times f2 so now equation 1 and unknown is 1 f2 and you can solve it do it for yourself because if i would like to solve it uh, the video may be too much lengthy okay and this equation the main thing i would like to mention here that this equation which equation this one this is the hotkey to solve this equation or solve this statically indeterminate problem okay and this equation is known as the equation of consistent deformation okay or the equation of compatibility you may encounter both the term okay so this was the concept okay so your task is to apply this compatibility equation in this problem just a hint for you well uh, here the steel if you think that steel we uh, the steel will compressed up to here this much and the concrete will compress here up to here it is not possible they will compress in same manner so the strain in both concrete as well as steel is same so this is the compatibility equation and if you replace this strain with stress that is sigma c by e c is equals with sigma s by e s again you have a relation with sigma c and sigma s just replace that in this equation and you will be able to solve this problem that's for today's lesson